of Rock Your Profile at LinkedIn. She, she leads a small but mighty team focused on extending LinkedIn's vision of creating economic opportunity out into the world through a program called Rock Your Profile. We're so thrilled that Lauren is here today to share Rock Your Profile with all of us. And if you enjoy today's session, they actually have an extended Rock Your Profile course on LinkedIn's learning uh, platform. So Lauren, please teach us all how to unleash our Wonder Woman. Thank you so much, Jerry, for the intro. Really appreciate it and super excited to be here um, with everyone today at Women Transforming Tech. So thank you so much for having me. Um, as Jerry mentioned, this is a special edition Rock Your Profile session that's going to focus on unleashing your Wonder Woman. Uh, so really excited to talk about a number of things with all of you today. But before we kick start, what I would love to do is maybe make this less of a presentation and more of a conversation a little off the bat. So um, would love to understand what are you most excited about to learn in the session today? You can respond in the chat um, and would love to just hear from all of you, you know, what sparked your interest? What do you want to know more about, uh, et cetera, and so on. So I'll give you a couple seconds to do that just so I can see what's happening, and then uh, we can go from there. So Lauren, I'm seeing the first one is, how do I make my profile more appealing to recruiters? Ah, yes, awesome. We'll definitely talk about that, so I love it, perfect. And anything else that's coming in there? Uh, how do I do self-advocacy, stand out from the crowd, learning about starting a LinkedIn profile, oh, and establishing credibility from the very first impression. I love it. Okay. And, and just so you know, we have someone saying hello from France. So bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour, welcome, welcome. Um, I love it. Awesome. Well, fabulous. It sounds like people are pretty aligned with a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about in terms of what you want to learn. So really excited to dive in. Uh, Jerry already kind of did an introduction to me, but just a little bit more so you get to know me. Um, I have been at LinkedIn for about eight years now. Um, I lead our Rock Your Profile program, which sits in the marketing organization. Um, and for anyone who's not familiar, Rock Your Profile is a program we have to educate a range of different folks um, and people like all of you around how you build a great profile that tells your true professional story. And then once you've done that, how do you then leverage the rest of the LinkedIn platform to go and connect to opportunity in whatever way that means to you? Because for different people, that means very different things. So excited to talk to you more about that today. And to kickstart us off, what I wanted to do is kind of set the context of this talk and um, start with some data on where we are. Um, before I bring in kind of some of the key stats, what I wanted to do was bring this to life through a video rather than me talking about it. I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that this works. Um, and if it doesn't, let me know, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this. So we'll see if it works. We all have three jobs now. We're teachers, we're caregivers, and we have our old jobs too. I feel powerless. So many of us are out of work. But we can come through this. Because women have a track record of achieving phenomenal things in the hardest moments. Let's take a huge spotlight and shine it on the problem. This is an opportunity for us to reset. We can start changing the way we all work by having these types of conversations. Okay, so hopefully you were able to see it, even if it was a little choppy, hopefully you got the main message there. Um, but, you know, I wanted to kick start with this because I think that, uh, especially since we're here to talk about women specifically with regards to rocking your profile, um, some very specific challenges women are facing in this pandemic environment. Um, and you can see, you know, LinkedIn is taking a front and center approach with this. If you search that hashtag on LinkedIn, hashtag conversations for change, you're going to see a lot of great things come up, including that uh, conversation around women in the workforce and what's going on there. So if you're interested 
interested to learn more, definitely check it out. Um, but I wanted to lead with that so that we can now get in and set the stage with some stats around women specifically in the workforce and what this is looking like right now. So um, what I wanted to start with is I pulled a lot of data from the most recent uh, McKinsey and Company Women in the Workforce report. For anybody who doesn't know, they put out a report every single year that talks about progress for women in the workforce. And what their research found is that there's two huge drivers of representation for women in the workforce. Those are hiring and promotions. And unfortunately, uh, companies are disadvantaging women in both of those areas from the very beginning. So their research actually found that women are less likely to be hired and promoted into manager level jobs. And many of us know that first frontline manager role um, is the role that kind of pulls you into leadership and then helps you get up into the executive levels. Uh, for every 100 men promoted to manager, only 85 women were promoted. And they found that that gap was actually larger for specific groups of women when you break that down further, with only 58 Black women being promoted and only 71 Latino women being promoted. So kind of interesting when you break down the data. In addition, men hold 62% of manager positions, while women only hold about 38%. So when you look at you know, women getting their start in terms of developing and growing in the workforce, um, this is where there's a disadvantage from the very beginning. Now pair this with the wonderful uh, pandemic landscape that we're in today, and there's a lot more interesting things that their research found in terms of what's going on with women in the workforce. Everyone, I'm sure it's no surprise to many of us here, you know, due to a lot of the challenges and hardships that have been created by this COVID-19 crisis, we now have more than 2 million women who have left the workforce. Want to let that sink in for a second. More than 2 million women. So this is actually the first time um, within McKinsey and Company doing this research is the first time they've seen signs of women leaving the workforce at higher rates than men in the whole previous five years of them actually, excuse me, doing this study. Now, it's no surprise as to why, right? There's a lack of flexibility. There's this feeling, this need to be on 24 seven at all hours of the day. There's also caregiving responsibilities, which we'll talk about in a second because women tend to pick up the uh, primary role in the caregiving space. Um, and you know what's challenging is this actually speaks to the fact that all the progress that has been made for women advancing their careers in the workforce in the past five years of them actually doing this study, it could potentially be erased. So um, some interesting stuff there. When you look at this further, women are actually 1.5 times more likely to be spending an extra three plus hours a day on housework and childcare. Um, just to put that into context, that's equivalent to about 20 hours a week which is about half of a full-time job. So just, you know, women got a lot going on. Um, you know, women are more likely about, they found three times as likely as fathers to be responsible for most of the housework and caregiving that's happening um, right now. And one in five mothers who don't live with a spouse or partner, so they're a single mom, um, they're actually found the challenges are even greater for them. Single mothers are much more likely than other parents to do all of the housework and childcare in their household. So um, some big you know, effects for women happening there. In addition, when you break this data down even further, COVID-19 has been especially challenging for women of color and specifically their research found for Latina and black women. Um, they found that Latina and Black women are more likely to be their family's sole breadwinner, so they're doing a lot more at home too in addition to working. Latina mothers are 1.6 times more likely to be responsible um, for childcare and housework, and that's 1.6 times more likely than white mothers. While Black mothers are actually twice as likely to be handling all of this for their families. So you really begin to see there's some very disproportionate effects, which I know is no surprise to probably anyone here um, of this pandemic. It's disproportionately affecting women than it is men. Um, but I wanted to kickstart and set the stage with some of that insight. 
So let's switch gears a little bit now and move to LinkedIn. And now that we have this overall landscape of what's going on in the world, especially for women in workforce, uh, let's talk about what the LinkedIn data tells us. So our teams actually went out and did some research and said, hey, we want to see if there's a difference between the way women complete their profiles on LinkedIn versus the way that men complete their profiles on LinkedIn. Is there a difference? And what our teams actually found is, yes, there is. And these were some of the key insights that came out of that research. First is that women tend to promote themselves and their successes less on LinkedIn than their male counterparts. Um, probably not a big surprise to many here, given what you know about uh, women and kind of their hesitancy to talk about their accomplishments and their stories. In addition, uh, they also found for networking, women actually had smaller networks than men did on LinkedIn. Um, they network very differently than men do. Many times women build very close relationships with a small group uh, and number of folks, whereas men tend to cast their network nets pretty wide and they may have a more diverse uh, network happening there. So their networks were definitely smaller. In addition, women were likely to have shorter profile summaries uh, than men on LinkedIn. And this also goes back to your summary is the spot where you're introducing yourself. A lot of the time you're talking about your accomplishments, you're talking about career highlights, you're talking about aspirations, and women are a little more hesitant to do that than men are. And then finally, they did a look at skills and actually found that women on average include about 11% less skills than men on their LinkedIn profile. So some very interesting data there. And knowing that what I wanted to do was kind of talk about now that you have some of this context for the broader research, and you also have some of these areas where women aren't necessarily leaning into their LinkedIn profiles, how can we empower you to lean in with some key best practices so that you can avoid um, some of those common pitfalls that women fall into? I think this is really powerful. Michelle Obama talks about your story is what you have. It's what you will always have, and it's something to own. And I think that couldn't be more true, especially bringing it to the context of your LinkedIn profile. What I would love to challenge this group today to do is think of your LinkedIn profile as less of that resume and more of your story. It's who you are, it's the accomplishments you've had throughout your career, it's the skills you bring to the table, it's what makes you, you and unique. And just like you evolve and grow as a professional in your career, your profile is going to evolve and grow to accommodate that story. And remember, you get to choose how that story shows up. It's completely up to you, how you tell that story, what it looks like, etc. So let's talk about some best practices to empower you to really own your story, because that's the goal of what I would love for you to get out of our time together today. Any great story starts with you. So this starts with your profile photo and really making sure that you are seen on LinkedIn. We have some stats here, just in case you think a photo is not important, it actually is. We found that members who add a profile photo um, get up to nine times more connection requests they get up to 21 times more profile views and up to 36 times more messages. So something as small as adding a photo has a really big impact. When you think about best practices here, there's a couple things I'd recommend. So first, um, if you want to upload a professional corporate headshot, because that's how you want to be represented, go for it. I love it. I've seen some great headshots out there. Um, if you don't, or you may not have access to that right now, given the fact that many folks are still at home, um, you don't have to do that either. You can actually just snap a photo on your own these days. Most smartphones, cameras snap high resolution photos, and you can upload that to LinkedIn. If you're snapping a photo on your own, a couple things I'd recommend. First, make sure that it is just you in the frame. We don't want you cropped out of a photo. We don't want a hover hand hovering over your shoulder from maybe a wedding crop out photo. You may look great, but it might be a little strange. Um, we really just want you front and center in the photo so people can see and connect to you. Make sure you have great lighting and that it's shot on a neutral background because uh, those are really important. And then also, uh, in case anyone's not familiar, when you upload your photo to LinkedIn, we actually offer photo filters so that you can provide that extra polish and add it to your profile. 
So just make sure you adhere to some of those best practices. And if you haven't updated your photo in a while, like maybe you have one up there, but the photo you have doesn't necessarily look like you anymore, update it so that um, it can definitely reflect you. A newer feature that many folks may not be as familiar with is name pronunciation. So I wanted to call this out. LinkedIn actually gives you the ability to pronounce your name for other folks um, so that you can make a great first impression with your professional community. So, um, and again, this comes in handy for many folks where you might have a name that doesn't necessarily read as it sounds, and you find that many people are getting your name wrong when they're chatting with you or when they're interviewing you, if you're job searching, this is a great way to give that correction right off the bat through your profile. So you can only update this on mobile. It doesn't work uh, to update on your desktop. So just keep that in mind. You want to do it through your LinkedIn mobile app. We found, you know, limit it to about 10 seconds, limit your background noise, speak slowly and clearly so people can pronounce your name and know how it should be pronounced. And then hold the phone about four inches from your mouth to record. That's the sweet spot for sound quality. So if you haven't done that, definitely take advantage of that feature. Another really important thing when it comes to your profile is industry and location. Um, because these things actually help you become discovered by your professional community. So much so that we found that members who add industry information to their profile, they receive up to nine times more profile views. Also keep in mind, listing a location can help you receive up to 19 times more profile views. And simply including the city where you're based makes you up to 23 times more likely to be found. So um, this is important because we have over 300,000 people that search by industry each week on LinkedIn. So definitely make sure that you have these things updated so that people can really find and connect to you and you can build that community. Now let's get into some meatier topics, um, which is summary, because this one is pretty tough. And if you struggle with summary, just know that you're not alone, because this is probably the number one area people ask me for a lot of recommendations and help on, um, because it's challenging. You're introducing yourself, right? And you're talking about your accomplishments. You're giving people that introduction to you. So when you think about your summary, um, the way I tell folks to think about structure is it should be an introduction to who you are, what you do, why what you do matters, and then the value or contribution you bring to the table that's unique to you, that other people may not bring those skill sets or want to contribute in the same way. So when you think about structure, that's kind of a good structure to get you started. Now, again, this is your true introduction to you. So you want to highlight um, not just how you want to contribute, but also maybe focus on some of those career aspirations and accomplishments, a little bit of that story. Um, and what I would recommend for folks in this area is check out other key profiles in your industry. You might have people who have really strong profiles or who are key influencers or thought leaders in your industry. Check out their profiles for some inspiration. Many times that can help to kind of get some of the ideas flowing. And also remember, you do not have to do this by yourself. So just keep that in mind too. Um, you can pull from your professional community and other people who know you well. You can sit across from them and have a simple conversation of, you know, ask them to ask you the question of, tell me about yourself. And when you start telling that story, many times other people can tease out some of those key skills or some of those things we may be hesitant to highlight um, that, you know, we do really well. So that's some key recommendations in that space. And then, uh, you know, work experience. So really important, make sure you have your most up-to-date work experience listed. We found that if you have that, you receive up to five times more connection requests, up to eight times more profile views, and up to 10 times more messages. So it is really important. Um, and we've also found profiles with two or more positions listed are up to 36 times more likely to be found by recruiters. So definitely make sure that you have an up-to-date work experience. Also, rather than just focusing on the day-to-day, -day, you want to pull in what was the impact you had, what was the change you led, if any, across the organization, and what were the results you drove. That's going to be much more impactful than just focusing on kind of the day-to-day -day logistics of a role. 
So you want to keep some of that day to day so people have a little bit of an idea of what you're doing, but at the same time, really make sure you're highlighting the impact. Um, and then last but not least, but most importantly, bring that work to life. I always tell people it's one thing to talk about what you do. It's quite another thing to actually visually connect people in to what you do and who you are and what you're about. So the way that LinkedIn lets you do this is through the featured section. Um, if you haven't seen it, it is that section that appears right underneath your about section where your summary is. And the featured section allows you to pin rich media content that really just speaks to you and your story and the things that you're the most proud of. For anyone, again, who's not familiar, when I say rich media, all it means is anything visual that helps you to tell your story. So it can be photos, it can be video content, it can be presentations, it can be website links if you have those, whatever helps you to tell that story. In addition with featured, you can actually feature posts that you've done on LinkedIn. If you've published a post, you can feature it there. In addition, um, if there's like a post that someone else has published, whether it's an article or short form post, you can also feature theirs and then talk about how, you know, that contributes to your story. So just keep that piece in mind as well. Okay, so finally, I'm a big believer in action. So what I wanted to leave you with here, and I hope, hopefully, uh, Jerry, I'm running on time and I'm leaving a couple minutes for questions, um, but a couple things for you to take action after this, because I think talk is cheap, action's where it's at. So that's where I want to um, inspire you today. So bring awareness to some of that data that we talked through so you can avoid some of those common derailers for women, especially when it comes to different parts of your profile. Review your LinkedIn profile, ensure that it really speaks to your contributions, your accomplishments, and your skills, and that it really tells your story. Remember, lean in and own it, just like our friend Michelle Obama talks about. Add your name pronunciation if you haven't, and feature content if you haven't done that. Those are some of our newer features that we launched uh, last year, so definitely make sure you're taking advantage of those. Don't do it alone. Remember, act your professional community to help you. I talked about some ways to do that with summary, but um, there's so many great ways. Just know you don't have to do it by yourself. You can always have other folks help you. And then set aside a regular time to check in on your profile and ensure everything is up to date. Um, because so many people, they let their profiles go stale. And again, as you're evolving and growing and you're gaining new skill sets or you're getting promoted at work or things like that, you definitely want to make sure that your profile is updated to to reflect those key changes that are happening. So set a regular cadence, whether it's once a quarter, a couple times a year, just to go in and make sure that um, your profile is the most up to date. And last but not least, I just want everyone to remember, this is a lot of stuff and it's not always easy. So you've got this um, and I have two of my favorite people here to tell you you've got this. Um, so I just hope this was helpful for you today and that these are some great tips to either help you get started or help you continue to evolve and grow uh, your LinkedIn profile. So with that, um, Jerry, I think I'll turn it to you for questions. Sure. So we only have about a minute for questions. Um, 60 seconds. So I know, 60 seconds. Um, so it says, um, how should I structure my LinkedIn page when undergoing a career change? Are there certain areas I should highlight? And by the way, you had like 20 some odd questions. So I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> <Sorry, you guys. laughs> um, so I would say for if you're going to be changing careers, I would say pivot your most recent experience or pull out the skills or experience that speaks to that career pivot. Um, and then anything in your past that also speaks to skills that will translate to that career pivot. Because a lot of people say, I want to remove experience that doesn't directly relate. Not necessarily. I think many times skills can transfer across industries. So I would focus more on that skills and that piece of the story. Okay, and then there was one more is, is it recommended to change your profile according to the role you're applying for? So if you're applying for a lot of jobs, how do you create that right LinkedIn profile? I would say you want to tailor it to a point where it's tailored maybe for that type of role within type of industry. Many times you're going for a specific, it's not 
super specific, but many times you're going for a general role within a general industry, I would try to keep it tailored there rather than custom tailoring it down to the details for each specific job. Because again, I think when you look at skills and you look at experience, there's a lot of things that transcend across jobs. So I would make sure it's probably more tailored at that higher level. Um, and then, you know, you can always speak to the individuals in that interview process. Perfect. Well, We've, we've run out of time. Um, I'd like to ask all our attendees to rate this session. Um, you can go and you'll see a little rate with three little stars. And if you click on that, um, if you uh, do rate the session, please, if you give us your email address, you'll be entered in a drawing. We've got some great prizes that will be announced at the end of the conference. So Lauren, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's our pleasure. And everyone, we're um, going to take a little break. Uh, we have half an hour so everybody can take a breath, stretch, use the <clears throat> facilities. And we'll see you all back here in half an hour. <laughs>